Good afternoon, everyone. Record snowfall across the Northeast and Central United States. This late in the season, it's pushing towards summer right now. Six plus inches of snow in Maine, Vermont. This is what the media is calling a dusting of snow to try to throw you off the trail that something is indeed cooling in our climate. 3.4 inches, that is considered a dusting anymore. Vermont, seven and a half inches. Cleveland, Ohio, obviously heavy accumulation to be on the roads like this. Pennsylvania, Michigan, again, trace of snow. You'll see how the pictures are so misleading there. U.S. highways closed in Tennessee due to ice and snow across the Cumberland Gap. Epic floods in Florida, no hurricane yet this deep of rainfall. And here we have these jokers at the Weather Channel calling like three months ago that this will be much above average springtime temperatures. AccuWeather again, completely wrong forecast, calling for early summer-like heat in this time, and it's snowing. Yet, we're supposed to consider them the experts? I don't think so. As usual, with the news today, if you don't live in Maine or Vermont area, you won't see very much about these record snowstorms that are coming through dumping four to seven inches of snow just a couple of weeks away from summertime. This is the all-time most recorded snow and the latest snows ever recorded in this part of the country. This is the middle of May, six plus inches across Maine area. You can see the totals here, 7.5 being the max all the way down to the lowlands with half an inch. This is not exclusively mountainous areas. This is all the way down into the lowlands as well. This is the depth of the snow that's come down over the last week up there. Depths on the cars, this is right in the city there, what the roads are looking like. And interestingly enough, almost three and a half inches of snow is just considered a dusting now in our media. Please note how they use the word dusting when that's a significant amount of record-breaking snow, yet it's labeled a dusting. Nelson's Crag, literally a month before summer, record-breaking snow. Now this is funny because on AccuWeather when I pulled this two inches plus off the Caribou Main image, look at the blue highlight. U.S. summer forecast is going to have more 90 degree days, but as you see, they've called everything wrong so far. Main roads covered. It takes a lot of snow to cover a road. Those things are heat islands and it takes an enormous amount of cold snow to get and blanket those. It is melt off so fast. Flurries melt off, snowfalls do not. Better look at here over the field. This is in Vermont. Again, seven and a half inches, one to two inches, four to five inches, depending on where you're at up there. Now I pulled up the main average snowfall for April. Notice that there's not even a listing for May because it never snows in May. And it did back in 1902, 1972. There's been two instances of snow, but it was in the very first of May, May 3rd, 4th, 5th. This is literally three weeks later. They don't even have a listing for May in their snow results. Brisk, unseasonably cold air. Brisk, with record-breaking snowstorms, should be labeled as such. I ran down the chart here of the record latest snowfalls. Let's look through the east, Ohio Valley, Midwest, and West. Clearly, as you can see, in the east, Burlington, Vermont, let's use that as our proxy. Half an inch, they just got seven and a half inches. That's literally 15 times the record broken. We're gonna run down through this chart here through the different areas that it did snow so you can see. Keep in mind Detroit, Michigan, Cleveland, Ohio, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania as we go through our list. Here's Cleveland speaking of. Now the last reported snow on May 10th in 1907 was two tenths of an inch of snow. This time they got over three inches. We're literally at that 15 times mark breaking the record again. 20 degree below normal temperatures, Sunday morning in Northeast Ohio. Cleveland could barely even run their marathon because the streets were covered in snow. Can you imagine a marathon in the snow? Frost potential, this comes off AccuWeather here, talking about the frost potential throughout the areas in pink. That's a giant area, that's not a little pocket as they called it, a pocket of cold frost possibility. That's literally the entire Northeast United States. This misphrasing of everything to draw you offline, I think they're blatantly lying right now to tell you my opinion. Having frost, and this is not that unusual at this time of the year. 
Well, you know what? It certainly is because they don't even have records going back having snow in Maine in May. So I'm going to say that it is unusual. If you wanted to know what types of fruits and vegetables are going to increase in price due to the cold weather damage, here is a nice list for you. Strawberries, tomatoes, peppers, and cucumbers, and squash. These will all rise in price due to the limited availability and die off from the cold in the Northeast United States. Price rises on all these guaranteed. Look here at the temperature departure from normal. Let's take a look into Michigan. A trace of snow. This is what the last recorded 1973 trace of snow. Now this year, 2016, we get it again, but clearly look at this picture. Stop for just a moment. Do you consider this a trace of snow? A trace is blotchy here and there, a few flurries. This is accumulation. Now when we search the record books, one tenth of one inch was recorded. Now that is a trace of snow, but that was back in 1912. So you must ask yourself in those previous images going on two to three inches, if we do simple mathematics, got one tenth of one inch of snow and three inches. High strangeness in Pennsylvania as well. Snow falls there, but it came down on these iced pellets, snow pellets. And Phillipsburg, another look at the strange snow pellets, not even really snow, a hail snow kind of combination mix. Temperatures in Black River Falls, Wisconsin, 20 degrees Fahrenheit, record broken. Let's take a look at the measurable snowfalls again. I just showed you a barrage there of Cleveland, Ohio, two tenths of a, an inch, but you saw significantly higher amounts there. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, half an inch. Ah, that's borderline the record. Now here's a look at all-time single greatest snowstorms that occurred during April and May. Now there's only one listing for May in Montana. And by the way, it snowed in Montana as well as Wyoming. Feet. So the latest there is May 27th to 29th on a mountaintop in Butte, Montana. All the other listings are for April. As you can see, we are into uncharted territory on this grand solar minimum. Now, if you think Northeast United States, okay, we're getting up toward Canada. Let's go down into Tennessee in the Southeast United States. You know, it's borders with Georgia. That's a warm area of the United States during spring and summer. But U.S. Highway 441 closed due to snow and ice this time of the year. Gatlinburg, Cherokee, tourist area up there, well known. It's in the Smoking Mountains National Park area. Now, this is what close the roads. Look at the sideways blowing ice accumulations on that fire hydrant. That was not drifting down snow. That was 50 to 60 mile an hour winds blowing sideways ice and sleet. This is Klingman's Dome. This is a great place to go hiking, by the way. Look at somebody's balcony and deck off there. Again, the accumulations that came down in the mountains during those days. Jumped over into the temperature averages for this time of the year it should be pushing almost 80 degrees fahrenheit so we're looking at about a 50 degree difference in normalized temperatures colder at higher elevations obvious but not usually snow this time of the year and also the national park service for the smoky mountains national park how can your advisory temporary road closure be offline you know even during the time of that road closure you had to go to twitter to get your news? Are you kidding me? You're supposed to be a US government agency, but we need to go to Twitter to find out really what's happening. Social media becomes our new truth platforms. Speaking of half truths and bent reality, here we go. Weather network, above normal temperatures. This is where their spring forecast was back in February. Above normal temperatures for this time of the year. Yeah, that, that's wrong. Mid to late spring pattern, above normal, warm and dry wrong again temperature forecast weather channel much above average for the may forecast absolutely wrong the last day of frost varies considerably yeah and you didn't even put the western united states there so all these snowstorms happening in california montana wyoming etc aren't even included they didn't want you to see that information let's jump over to europe for a moment again we're going to stay with accuweather but notice over the uk take a look you know what they're calling cold now? Limited heat. I'm not, I'm not making that up. Limited heat is the way they're trying to rephrase cold because it's becoming so common that there's no way to hide the global warming lies anymore. It's just impossible. It's in your face. It's everywhere. The Northern Hemisphere, 
as being blanketed in cold and snow weeks before summer starts. And they, this is unexplainable for the global warming crowd, so they need to rename it. Remember, when I grew up, it was called global warming. Now it's called climate change. You know, I used to call it cold. Now they call it limited heat. I guess we have to put a new listing in the Webster's Dictionary for this. Limited heat, formerly known as cold. Palm Springs, California, nice and sunny May. It has to be warm. No, right here we go. Snowstorm, not just a little snow, blanketing snows over the forest on the mountaintops there. As we look through these images, do you think that's a dusting? Again, the media calling it just trace amounts of snow. That is inches that have fallen. In Great Falls, Montana, looking at five to 10 inches over that time. Cheyenne, Wyoming, again, well, it is above 10,000 feet, but they received a foot and a half. Taking a look a little further south, Washington, D.C., further down Virginia, we're getting into just barely the high 30 Fahrenheit range for this. That's record cold. Props to Weatherbell for actually putting blue and different colors of cool within their map there. Everywhere else where it's 40 degrees, it's yellow, and that signifies heat in the old maps, but now they've just changed cold into hot, so truth is lies and lies is truth. Now let's not leave out Iowa. Let's jump over into the Midwest. Record cold, record cold, record cold. Dallas-Fort Worth, record cold. It is occurring everywhere. It is so obvious now, and when you look at these last measurable snowfalls, I put this chart through a few times just so we could keep up with the dates. There's so many listed here. Out west, you know, they're looking at two tenths of an inch, and this is feet of snow. This is multiple inches of snow, but these last records were just fractions of an inch. It's exponential amounts breaking records, but not making the news at all. It shouldn't. It's a global warming agenda. Here's another anomaly. As more cosmic rays penetrate our atmosphere due to a decreased magnetosphere, as you would expect during a solar minimum, we're gonna to start to get these torrential rains flipped upside down. This is not even a hurricane. This is a foot of rain with no hurricane off of one of these, absolutely an atmospheric compression event. Again, which we witnessed on the equator twice last year with the three feet of hail in Quito and then Bogota. This is another atmospheric compression event right before your very eyes. And if we look out into the forecast through today, you'll start to see that they're still expecting snow out west in several locations. The 16th also snow, snow, snow. This is all normal, isn't it? Instant weather maps decides that 10 degrees is still yellow. How cold does it have to be before you show blue and cold on the map? Anyway, look at the UK, it's 15 degrees Celsius. These are Celsius temperatures, not Fahrenheit. And then look over into Moscow, far right of the map if you don't know where Russia is, but in that whole area where Siberia is actually warmer than the UK. And again, I thought that no way, so I jumped over on a world weather map where they do have some markings. And again, you'll see Moscow and London are the exact same temperatures, but it's weird because in Siberia, it's five degrees C warmer, which is about uh, eight and a half, nine degrees Fahrenheit warmer than Moscow would be. So the weather's starting to flip up and down. And when we come in now to the La Nina, which is going to intensify from this year forward, I am calling A, significant absolute dropout in the stock market this year. Coming up right now, probably June or July. They're going to lock you down so you can't move. B, when the La Nina starts, we are going to get into the first global food shortages coming up through this season. Corn prices are going to double by October. Moving through 2017, you're going to see absolutely significant wipeouts of wheat and corn production globally. I'm going to do a report on China, what's happening up there. They just got feet of snow. Australia, hailstorms dropping crops everywhere. But China was really badly hurt on their harvest because everything that came up through the ground when they planted early was just totally frozen and wiped out. Now you'll start to see the same thing on ag web through the United States, trying to catch up on all that. We are out of time. It has begun. Time is up. You better get ready for plan B. You're going to have to know how to grow food. No question about it. You are going to need to organize with your neighborhoods. You are going to have to get into your communities and time is up. I am sorry. We are out of time.